That is how you do. Philadelphia Phillies 5, Washington Nationals 2. As we welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Ricky Bo, Ben Davis, I'm Michael Barkan. Coming up is uh, Tom McCarthy and Ruben Amaro Jr. This was maybe not by the numbers, but that's a nice, solid win. It was a solid win. There's no doubt about it. Ranger pitched well. I mean, you look at the middle of the order. They hit the ball well. They had a lot to do with this game. And I'm talking about two, three, four, five in this lineup. All of them doing some damage in this one, whether it was scoring runs, driving in the runs. And you look at JT Real Muto. I mean, he's stepping up an extra notch right now. You gotta love to see that. When you look at this one, yeah. let's start on the mound and the Ranger. Ranger Suarez co- continues on from what he started in his first start of the season on Sunday. What do you think of his performance? I, I still don't think he's as sharp as he wants to be right now. I think his location was a little bit off early on in the game. You actually could see some frustration from him early on in the game, but I mean, he's pitching well enough to get through six innings, so he's doing things correctly. It just seems like that one mistake is kind of haunting him right now. You look at his first start, he gave up two run homer, and then this start, he did the same thing to Gallo. Uh, two run home, home run to Gallo, and that, and that was uh, a little bit of a surprise to me. I, I, I think Ranger wants perfection. I think that's the way he wants to pitch. Uh, he fielded his position well, got ground balls. I mean, this is a guy that just went out and pitched. He got the job done. That's the bottom line here. I mean, two runs, nobody's crying about that through six innings. Yeah. Ricky, let me ask you this. Do you think that the 82 pitches, so do you think it was a matter of the pitch count or him getting up and down seven times? Probably go him, get, him going up and down seven times because I was a little bit surprised that we saw Hoffman warming up uh, after the sixth inning. I was like, wow. I looked down. I'm like, Rangers got 72 pitches. Or, or, or excuse me, 79 pitches at the time it was. I'm like, I'm surprised at this. I, I think he's throwing the ball well. It doesn't look like he's laboring. It doesn't look like he's he's tiring at all. I wonder w- what what the theory is. Well, they did throw him back out there. He hit a batter, and at that point in the seventh inning, I think you go to the bullpen anyways. Let's bring Ruben back in. Ruben, what do you think of the way Ranger Suarez pitched the way he came out of the game, and would you have kept him in any longer? I mean, I was okay with him coming out of the ball game. Um, I, anytime a starting pitcher is on the mound, I want that guy to go as long as possible, and he's still throwing the ball fairly well. But I think it made it pretty obvious once he once he uh, hit that one hitter, one batter. I think it was Winker. Um, you know, Rob Thompson sort of had everything lined up perfectly, and and it worked out very very well. Um, yeah, I mean, do you like to have those guys continue to go as long as possible? Yes, and I thought he still had pretty good stuff, but. Hey, that's the reason why they have the bullpen that they have, and uh, they, they all did the job very nicely. I think Ranger threw the ball well. Uh, I think he's still going to be, and Ricky made the call early uh, in the season, and uh, in, in, in uh, you know the first game of the of the season that this guy's got a chance to be one of the best left-handers in all of baseball, and perhaps one of the uh, Cy Young Award candidate, and uh, and he's going to be a good one. He didn't have his best stuff tonight. But he still pitched really, really well, and uh, I just love the way he goes about the, his business on the mound. Rube, I watched Alvarado today. I thought he was hitting, throwing some pretty good pitches. The umpire didn't think so. And I, 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 you look around the league right now, and this is happening a lot. Umpires are missing a lot of pitches right now. I, I mean, how, how do you how do you look at Alvarado's performance, considering you're going to look down and say, well, he threw 28 pitches. That's a lot of pitches for him. But I think the umpire took him out of his rhythm a little bit. I think he did. I don't think there's any question about it. And whenever time, I mean, any time that you throw a strike as a pitcher, you want it to be called. Um, and especially uh, late in the game. Um, and in, this, in these situations, it just has a, a sort of a domino effect. It'll it, it, If you don't get those pitches, then he's got to make another pitch and then another. And to the uh, Washington Nationals' credit, I mean, there's a couple of at-bats there at the end. Vargas really battled. Winker really battled. Yes, I think Winker was uh, struck out a couple of times. Um, but it does make it a little frustrating for the pitcher at times. And you just got to grind through it, which Alvarado did, um, and, and stayed right with it, made his pitches, and got out of the inning and won the ball game. But um, but it does make a difference because then you got Strom going. You got, uh, you know, he ended up throwing a ton of pitches, almost 30 pitches in one inning, which, you know, which we don't necessarily want to do, especially when you're going back to back. I mean, he's going to be down for tomorrow at least. And so, um, you know, I, I, you just love to have those guys make the right calls at the right times. 
and uh, I think that's one of the reasons why you're going to end up seeing the uh, the automatic uh, you know system. But um, uh, listen, they won the ball game. He made his pitches when he had to. That's the plus. Just eight strikeouts for the Phillies today, Ruben. I know Kyle Swerver had three of those, but some really good approaches with two strikes you saw with Marsh, with Castellanos, uh, Boehm. This is a, a lineup that I think is starting to click a little bit. Turner with a couple of knocks today. But the, I love the approach today and the fact that they were not willing just to go down via the strikeout. Yeah, I agree with you, um, Ben. There's no question about it. That they, I think that they were uh, their mindset to use the middle of the field was really good. Saw some base hits roll up the middle of the field. There's a lot of hits up there in the middle. And, uh, and, and you know, you saw some pretty good at-bats. Stodd got a base hit to left. Uh, almost got another base hit up the middle. That was a, a, it was a nice play by Vargas. Um, you know, so Castellanos get a base hit up the middle. And Bohm drove that first, you know, drove the first run in with a line drive to right field that was uh, sort of misplayed by Lane Thomas. So uh, anytime these guys can use utilize the middle of the field consistently, that that'll that'll translate into into you know more, better at bats and and more power and more home runs on the pull side because the pitchers will be forced to try to get in on some guys and make some mistakes. So uh, I like the approach. I like the fact that they tried to put the ball in play and they didn't really give up. Uh, you know, to have a ton of strikeouts. I mean, eight is you know that's sort of like a. Uh, um, you know, an average uh, strikeout day, but um, but they did battle up there and, uh, and and created some some opportunities there at the end. Ruben, there's a very fine line right now that the Phillies are riding with Johan Rojas. Um, at what point do you you know kind of take a step back and say, are we stunting this guy's growth? Yeah, I think it's really about his mental outlook. I mean, if the guy's still, you know, staying positive, um, it's really about having quality of bats. Today he had some opportunities to do some damage, didn't do it. Um, I think he still is, uh, you know, so- someone who's going to help this ball club because of his glove. Um, I-, I do th- still think that this, the rest of this lineup, the other eight guys, really, that they should be carrying the load on the offense. But you don't want an automatic out. In the, in the nine hole either so I think there's um, I think there's some leash there that Dave Dombrowski and, and Rob Thompson will have on this young man but right now he seems like he's in a pretty good spirits I got a chance to talk to him uh, uh, a little bit uh, before the ball game today and he just seemed like normal Johan Rojas now if it starts to affect him um, in a way such that you know he's starting to doubt himself or not feeling good about himself that may change, or if he's not, you know, utilizing his legs or doing something defensively to help the team, then things may change. But um, uh, again, I think you got to give him a little bit more time, and we'll see what happens. Ruben, staying with Rojas, his his benefactors will say, you know, he batted 302 last year in 50 plus games, and his detractors will say, yeah, but he was not good in the playoffs, and now he's continuing on on that path. Where do you see him as a hitter? Uh, right now, I don't know if he's making the right swing decisions. I don't know if, feel, if he's if he's looking uh, super confident with his swing. Um, a little bit tentative, and that's a little bit of a concern for me. But again, I think it only takes like a couple of like little dink hit bait hits or hits a line drive to get him going. I, I think you know hitting is such a mental uh, game, and it's really still one of the most difficult things to do in all of sports. That. You know, and then there's so much negativity associated with it. But if he hits the barrels a couple of balls up, I think that that'll change his whole outlook. Um, and I think it really just takes one or two good swings or one good uh, day at the ball at the plate, and uh, and I think that'll help swing things around for him. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow, my friend, Ruben Amaro Jr. at Nationals Park, calling today's game with Tom McCarthy. We thank you. He is too cool for school, but I like it. I like the cockiness. I like the attitude. I, I just, you know, once he starts to feel perfect, he's going to get better and better as the season goes on. I think the velocity will come up a little bit more. But, I mean, he's a guy that really doesn't need that velocity all that much because he turns the ball over, he, he cuts it, he, he uh, sinks it. He's got a little bit of everything in that repertoire. Ben, he ran into some trouble in the third inning, gave up a hit, gave up a, a home run to Gallo, and that was the only home uh, runs that he gave up. 
were it not for that, we'd be really saying he was great. Yeah, I, I liked what he what he did today. If you look at his, his chart, 40% two seamers, 21% curveball, 16% four seam, 16% change up. So he really mixed it up out there. They had a good game plan going into it, and he really took advantage of the Nationals, their aggressiveness. A lot of first pitch outs or two pitch outs. That's why you see that pitch count down 82 pitches through six innings, six plus innings actually. So uh, I liked what I saw out of him, and I just like the movement. You know, the, it's not it doesn't have have to be about velocity, but the movement was definitely there for him today. All right, that's on Ranger Suarez. Let's hear from another guy on the Ranger, and that's Rob Thompson. Here he is post game in the manager's office. It was really good. I mean, one pitch. I, I didn't see where it was, but um, it was a sinker that Gallup hit out. I'm sure it was probably was down the middle. middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, he was good. Through strikes, curveball was good. Uh, Changeup was good. Command. Control. Um, I thought it was really, really good. Alvarado got his pitch count a yeah. bit there. And yeah. So back to back days, is he going to be down for? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Pitching staff seems to be kind of rolling along here in the early going. What do you think has been like the key to some of these uh, recent starts here? Well, I, th I think we're throwing strikes, and and we're getting ahead of hitters. And once you get ahead of hitters, they you know they get on the defensive, and, and I think that's what we're doing. Um, obviously, we have a bunch of guys that have really good stuff. Uh, so then once you get ahead, the stuff plays and, and it's tough hitting. So uh, they've done a great job. I think JT's the type of guy that takes offense at pitcher intentionally walking somebody in front of him in the face. And even though it is Bryce Harper and it makes a lot yeah. of sense. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know whether that motivates a guy or not. And, you know, that, that can work in the opposite way too. So. Um, he just, he's been having good at bats. He's swinging about well. What have you liked? Of, why do you think he's having such good at bats? I know he worked on his swing um, in the offseason. Yeah, and I, I, you know, the, he shortened his leg kick a little bit. And um, I think that's giving him better timing. He's getting his foot down um, not as in, inconsistently as he did in the past. So uh, he's ready to hit, and I think it's helping him. And he's hit cleanup, I think, pretty much every game he's played this year, right? Yes. Last year in the postseason, you had Bohm in that spot. When you started the season, why did you like JT in the cleanup spot? I just liked his at-bats during spring training. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I in those spots there, you know, where we have Bohm and, and Stott, I want people that are going to put the ball in play because there's usually somebody on base. And um, and now JT's putting the ball in play. So now you got three guys right in a row that have, you yeah. know, but you felt that good about his at bats this spring that yeah. you're like I'm going to put him in this. It's yeah. a big spot right there. Yeah. Harper. Yeah. Yeah, I like him right there. So it's two days in a row. You guys have jumped on them early. You led pretty much the whole way. When you're facing a team that you know you should beat, I mean, how important is that to, to you know, be able to jump out ahead early? It's, it doesn't matter who you're playing. I think it's important to get out in front and, and get people on defensive and get some momentum, and then keep the momentum. Um, so yeah, whether it's it doesn't matter who you're playing. And with Hoffman, I mean, to pick up five outs there, uh, how, what does that do for you as a manager when you have a guy like that that you can turn to? Him and Strom are, are, you know, one's left hand and one's right hand, but they do kind of the same thing. And you can use them in multiple spots. You know, both of those guys can close out games. They can high leverage. They can, you know, come in dirty inning and go out the next, next inning. Uh, they're just like Swiss Army knives, and, and that's, that's value. What about the um, JT's throw there? It's to second that caught stealing. That's a pretty good runner. Pretty. Yeah, I think we got him one seven six or something like that. One of the coaches did anyway. That's that's better than I I could throw. <laughs> what was your pop time back in the day? It wasn't one seven six. Okay, all right, fair enough. I'm sure you were happy with Marsh's at bat in the was it the ninth um, with the runners on first and second back to back the walks. Um, yeah. Just like. Kept it simple. Yeah, um, he's having great at bats. He really is. He's going to be off tomorrow, um, but he's having great at bats, and I, I really like what he's doing. Rob Thompson on Brad Marsh, Rob Thompson on JT Real Muto. One of the things I found interesting in his remarks was he was saying, yeah, I like the way he, he batted in the spring. We're talking about other guys and why they hit in certain positions, but he just kind of, you know, 
I like the way he was batting. I put him in cleanup. No big deal. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. I mean, if you're in spring training and you're swinging the bat well, that's one thing. If you're in spring training, you're not swinging the bat well, that, that doesn't matter. It's kind of a weird situation because I, I, I believe that hitters, if they're getting their foot down, if their timing's right, the timing's going to carry over with them. I think guys that are struggling a little bit in spring training, they try to do different things. They're trying different things every single day. And, you know, when you got everything going in the right direction, I think that's what Rob Thompson is talking about here, that, hey, I saw something that I liked in spring training. I'm just going to have him carry it over. So, yeah, what's wrong with him in the four hole? No, love him in the four hole. I also like Jeff Hoffman working in a ball game, and he used him today. And Thompson talked about him and Matt Strom being Swiss Army knives. You can use them anywhere you want, but that doesn't necessarily mean he won't be or he will be as consistent as we might like yeah, in it, appearances. It, he's got a lot of options with both those guys. So they're not just specialty guys. Not, Hoffman's not a guy just to come in there and get righties out. Strom is not a guy that just to come in and get lefties out. These are guys that, that fill up the strike zone, and I think you're really seeing that. They, they compete within the strike zone. And it's almost like they're, it, it's, it's refreshing to see is that they're okay with contact. They're not, they're not swing and miss guys all the time. Sometimes you come out of that bullpen, you have to be a swing and miss guy. You have to get a strikeout. And they realize those situations. But these are two guys that are not afraid of contact. That's why they're filling up the strike zone. They say, here, hit it. I think my stuff is better than your swing. So if you get the best of me, so be it. But I'm going to compete within the strike zone. And, and move on. That's but it. You know what's odd? Oh, he's got a quick release. There's no doubt about it. But you know what's odd? That's one of the only times. You don't see him actually throw the ball all the way through a lot. You see him skip the ball a lot. Which he does intentionally. Yeah, I know he's doing it intentionally. But that was odd that he actually had that kind of pop time on that play. Yeah. It was and a good he let pitch it go to, all the way through. Yeah, it was a good pitch to throw on. Nunez didn't have the best jump, not taking anything away from JT. But it's, it's one thing to be blessed with a, with a great arm. Whenever we played the Rangers, we played them a lot because they were in our division. Everyone would always talk about Pudge Rodriguez. Oh, this guy's got a cannon. This guy's got a cannon. Don't run on his arm. And I would think they don't, if they only knew how good his footwork was to put him in that position to throw guys out. Yes, he did have a cannon, but he was so efficient with his feet and getting to his feet. It's like a pitcher re, uh, repeating his release point all the time. But that's what JT is able to do is get to his feet efficiently. And yes, he's got a great arm. It's a perfect storm. And he referred to playing shortstop coming up and that helped his footwork, right? Without a doubt. Of course mm -hmm. it would. It's a right. lot of the same movements. Yeah. And he, man, he got up there fast. Stepped in there. Out. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, uh, let's listen to Ranger Suarez and interpreter Diego Daniello in the clubhouse. No, I was like the Cinque. It was good today. Despite the home run, it was Cinque. But the curve, temprano in the conteo, it was good. The change helped me a lot with some rolls. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that my sinker was good uh, today in spite of the home run that I gave up with that. Uh, the curve early in the count, the curveball early in the count. And uh, also my changeup helped me to get a couple of rounders out. To be able to get in the seventh inning this early in the season, is that kind of where you hoped you would be? Yes, <laughs> Siempre quiero lanzar siete, siete, ocho, y mi mente, ese es mi mente, pues cada vez que voy a lanzar, ir allá y tratar de lanzar los nueve innings, eh, o llegué al séptimo inning, salí para el séptimo inning, contento con, con llegar al séptimo inning. Yeah, that, that's what I always want. Uh, I always want seven, eight. Uh, that's what I have in my mind every single day. I always want to go. Uh, for the complete game uh, today, I got to the seventh, and I'm 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 extremely happy about that. About going, uh, about getting to the seventh today. Uh, happy about it. When they intentionally walked Bryce in that spot, and then JT follows with the home run, like what was it like in the dugout? Cuando, intentionally walking Bryce. Cuando le dan a hacer por el internacional a Bryce que después viene JT y da el home run. ¿Cómo estaba el dugout ahí? ¿Cuál fue la reacción? No, es que Nosotros ya sabemos que cuando no es tenemos un equipo eh, del primero al noveno te puede te puede cambiar el juego. Mira, le dieron la base por bola a intencional a Harper y vino JT la sacó. O sea, que eso quiere decir que, que estamos eh, todo el equipo, todos los lo que batean ahí están tienen tremendo haciendo tremendo approach uh, en, en, 
en esta temporada. Yeah, uh, you know that's that what tells us is that uh, we know what we have. I mean, we have a, a line of one to nine that we know they're all game changers. See how Bryce gets intentionally walked, and then you you get J JT and he he gets the hit. So uh, that's what we that's what we have right now. All of our hitters are doing a tremendous job, and we know what we have. What was the energy like in the dugout when that happened? ¿Cómo estaba la energía? No, siempre, es que no, no, no tiene que ver suceder eso. Ya desde que vamos a salimos a que el juego dicen play ball, eh, siempre, tenemos una, una energía eh, positiva, eh, siempre estamos a, ayudando uno al otro ahí y ese, ese positivismo siempre está. Yeah, uh, it's not only when, when things like this happen. I think it's uh, from the beginning. We, we hear play ball. And uh, we always have a positive energy inside it, so we don't need anything to happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, our dugout, our clubhouse is full of players who are willing to help each other, and I think that's, that's what's important. Rangers, Suarez, and interpreter Diego Daniello. The only thing that would be better is if Diego wore a uniform. Don't you think he'd be better in the dugout with a, with a uni? Ricky Bo? I have no comment. Okay. We'll just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pass on that. But when you listen to what Ranger Suarez said through Diego, very confident. He's not happy with me. Very confident guy, Benny. Very he, confident. He is very confident. He believes in himself and a guy, another guy that's not afraid to pitch to contact. I think that's why you see the pitch count down. I mean, he's, he wants, he's very efficient out on the mound. He wants to get quick outs and, and go deep into ball games as possible. Uh, it's, it is a lot different than what we see in today's modern pitching is they just want to miss bats and worry about velocity and how hard they throw and how many punch outs they can get. You know, I, I got 10 punch outs. Yeah, but he lasted five innings. You know, and, and you threw 115 pitches. So, uh, but it's very refreshing to see someone like Ranger uh, to go out there and compete in the fashion he does. He believes in himself, and I think that's why he gets the soft contact that he gets. And, and, and I'm going to go even further and say that this is a guy that, that would rather get ground balls than strikeouts. I mean, he loves playing his position. I think he would love to get, you know, 27 ground outs to him so he could show off, play his position, kind of flip the ball up in the air, take his time over to first base. He's a fifth infielder. There's absolutely no doubt, no doubt in my mind. That guy will win a gold glove at one time or another. And, and, I, th and I think this way. I love his attitude of – you know, hey, Ranger, you made it to the seventh inning. Yeah, it, I, I want to go longer. I, I want to go eight innings. I want to go nine innings. This is the type of player that you want on your team. This is the type of pitcher you should love on your team. And I think in, in my eyes, in my opinion, you know, being a former pitcher, I love watching him pitch. I, I think he's got really good tempo. I think he knows what he wants to do on each and every pitch. You don't see him taking time and, and taking extra looks and, like, thinking. I think he has a really good idea of how he wants to get each and every guy out, and he tries to set, set them up to the best of his ability. And then when he leaves the game, the bullpen, not too shabby, starting with Jeff Hoffman. He pitches an inning in two-thirds, and Gregory Soto – Chips in as well, and Jose Alvarado also. We'll get to Hoffman in a moment, but let's go with the, the last guy first, and Jose Alvarado. You seem to share his frustration regarding the I'm, strike zone. I'm absolutely 100% sick of these umpires. They're trying to take over games, especially late in games. You watch around, go ahead, watch around Major League Baseball because it's happening everywhere. These guys have quit on the calling balls and strikes, I feel like. I feel like they know this new, you know, uh, computerized Automated system is going to be here at some point. And I think they're uh, they're kind of going through the motions at times, and I think it stinks. I, I, I think in you know, especially in the ninth inning, you got to be focused. Whether it, you have to be a hundred percent focused, not fifty, not twenty, like Angel Hernandez, you got to be focused. And you, you see it way too many times that they start to take over a game. This is what was happening there in the bottom of the ninth. I was was so anti electric strike zone. Yeah, it was too. I was so, no, you can't have that. You can't have it. I'm all for it now. Why were you against I, it initially? Because I like, the, I like the human element of it, but we're seeing some egregious calls. Some, I mean, pitches right down the middle. Some have benefited the Phillies. Some have not benefited the Phillies. Uh, but this is just, it, it's gotten to the point where it's like these guys are somewhat tails. Strike. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And now I'm for it because if it's going to be in there in that box and, and they think that it is legit if it's if it's the real deal and then I'm all for it because some of this umpiring is bad. Flat they're, out they're, bad. I was literally watching a game the other night after after one of our games ended and I, I'm sitting there watching this and it was like ball right down the middle for a ball. 
ball a foot and a half outside was a strike. I'm like, you know, what, what is really going on here? Are they not getting – are they fooled? Are they fooled? Did they, did they get fooled by a pitch? I highly doubt it. But, I mean, these guys got to straighten up. And I think you want the consistency for both the hitter and the pitcher. And you've got replay on the base paths. Why not have that certainty behind the plate? I, I, if it's a foot out, that's not good. Yeah. You see what it's long ago, what it's done in tennis. There's no doubt about it. There are no arguing the lines calls, and there's no arguing the strike zone. If it's automated, you'd still have a guy behind a home plate who would be saying what the whatever the computer says, but it's certainty. But if we have, if we have this... Uh, technology if we have the, the 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 you know you want to judge a play or, or challenge a play then why I think it should be on everything they say well that's not reviewable why if we, if we have the replay to get the play right like there was a Spencer Torkelson the other night had a check swing he barely moved his hands and Angel Hernandez says yes he went around for a strike and it, all you have to do Angel, is look at it for man. one quick second and realize that's not even close it shouldn't be the, the, we have the replay to get it right so I think we should be able to do it for all the plays, yeah. not just that the ones that are reviewable and ones that aren't reviewable. Mm -hmm. There are no repercussions. Right. Angel Hernandez has been around for how long? Long time. And he's good? That's a question. Mm -hmm. Ben? No, he's not a good no. umpire. There it is. Ricky Bowen. Can't ben. keep these guys around anymore. Let's uh, going to keep JT Real Muto around for as long as we can. Here he is post game in the clubhouse. Yeah, you no. get it. No, I know it comes with the job uh, of hitting four hole on this team. Um, yeah, just for me, it's it's more important to just take it like another bat and not try to go up there and get vengeance or do too much. Um, I just try to treat it like any other bat. How have you felt about your at bats so far? Obviously, a small sample, but yeah, I mean, I felt pretty good for the most part. Um, there's some adjustments I can make. I'd like to stop chasing as much with two strikes. Um, and stop striking out so much. But other than that, I feel like I'm putting good wood on the ball. Um, when I make good decisions, I'm getting good swings off. So pretty happy with it so far. Do you feel like you're chasing less than you did last year? Um, in certain counts, I, I feel like with two strikes, I could do a better job. Um, just have you know, a little better approach with two strikes and trust my swing and not not come out of it. Um, but earlier in the count, I'm definitely chasing less. How encouraged were you coming into the season? Rob said one of the reasons why you're in the cleanup spot start the season was he really loved the bats in the spring and the work he did in the offseason leading into it. So I mean how like, I guess encourage what you're optimistic you were where you're coming in. Um I mean to be honest I didn't think too much about it. Uh, I did I felt good about the work I did in the off season and, and um, felt good about my bats in spring training so obviously anytime you have the confidence of the manager it gives you a little more confidence in the box so um, that's it's where I, I like to hit up there at the top of the order. So if I'm right. That's where I want to be. And um, I feel like that just gives you more confidence when you step in the box. It seems like the pitching staff as a whole has done a good job of keeping the walks down to start the season. I'm wondering why you think that is or if it's just... I need mean, a small sample. But, um, no, I think, it's, I think it's just the philosophy. I mean, we talked about it all spring training. Um, Caleb and Cap really pounded into the guys that we have really good stuff and we have guys that... Uh, have multiple pitches that are plus plus pitches, so we just got to trust it and make the hitter beat us, and let's not beat ourselves. If, um, most of the time, our stuff is going to win over lineups, even when we're facing good lineups. It's when we walk guys, it's when we get behind the count that we become a little more predictable, and that's when usually bad things happen. So, I think just having a belief in their stuff and trusting themselves, and uh, attacking the big part of the zone, and just going right at the guys. What do you think the biggest difference is right now? Your swing maybe today as opposed to. October, September, you know, last year. You know, I actually started to feel pretty good uh, the last week or two of the season, and then um, playoffs I felt good. And I think the biggest difference is just my swing direction, um, my approach staying to right center and, and trusting that swing path. Because um, anytime I start looking in or cheating the pool, that's when things go south for me and my front hip leaks early. And um, usually if my direction is good into right center field, that's when I'm at my best, and I feel like I've been able to do that more consistently. So, Sorry, when you have early season results, does it make it easier to stay with that? Like, with what changes you made during the offseason as opposed to if it wasn't Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think uh, anytime you make adjustments, you want to be good right away and succeed with it because um, if things go south and you're not feeling good, you start changing. And, um, and, then, and 
you know, the adjustments I made aren't anything that I haven't done before. My swing right now is just like it was in 18, 19. I just got back to some things that I was doing before that were a little more, um, uh, let's see, they were just a little more, I'm just, I would put myself in a better position more often than I was last year. The last two years, I've kind of gotten away from it, so just doing that to be more consistent. Yeah, Pat, was it B3, three straight curveballs? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, and three so straight. you just, it's 0-2, are you expecting, are you expecting him to throw another one, or like, what's your approach right there? Not necessarily. I think you just have to, you know, when you get two strikes, you just got to shorten up, and, and I can't think about what pitch he's going to throw me, because then I'll be beat by his fastball, so I'm still trying to stay on time for a fastball, but just really let the ball travel a little more and try to make a good swing decision and, and not try to hit the ball out of the park, which is funny because that's what happened. But I'm more just trying to do less and put the ball in there. And then when you've been pretty good in those spots when Hopper's been intentionally walked recently anyway, is that, so are you just treating it like any other bat? Are you calmer or you know, is there anything to those spots? Yeah, for me, it's honestly, I just try to treat it like another bat. Because um, I, like I said before, if I try to go up there and do more and, and make the other manager pay. That's usually when I get out of the zone and chase and try to and my sweep falls apart. So I try to treat like any other bat and almost honestly just do less. Like try to calm myself down more and do less and that usually works out.